Hello everyone, today we are going to discuss on the topic human reproduction and this video is presented to you by www.examhe.com So the topic we are going to discuss today is female reproductive system and uh, previously we have discussed about the male reproductive system. So in female reproductive system uh, it consists of a pair of ovaries and a pair of oviduct. Also it consists of uterus, cervix, vagina and external genitalia and all these are located in the pelvis region. Uh, ovaries are located uh, at the lower abdomen behind the kidneys. So here you can see uh, ovaries are two in number and uh, oviduct or also called fallopian tube or uterine tube are also two in number. Okay. So that's why it is called pair of ovaries and pair of oviduct. So the role of fallopian tube is to connect the ovary to the uterus. So this is the uterus and the role of the uterus is to carry a baby, a carry a, a fetus uh, after the fertilization. And uh, when the uh, uh, baby start uh, growing in its size, the uh, wall of uterus is stretchable and it also increases its size and hence the development of uh, baby take place inside the uterus. So the uterus open into the cervix and which open into the vagina. Vagina is also called the birth canal and also it is the area which is required for copulation. Ovary is the uh, female gonad which produces the female gamete ova or egg and also produces several hormones like estrogen and progesterone. These hormones are helpful in ovulation and also uh, the development of mammary gland. And mammary gland is also the part of female reproductive system and which provide the nourishment to the newborn baby. Okay, And the mammary gland is present in the thoracic region. So now we are going to discuss the female external genitalia which includes mons pubis, labia majora, labia minora, hymen and clitoris. So as you can see in this diagram there present a mons pubis. This upper area is called mons pubis. So this is a cushion uh, of fatty tissue which is covered with the skin and hairs and these hairs are called pubic hairs and after that you can see the folding of a skin which is called the labia majora and uh, beneath tha that you can see the another folding of a skin which is called labia minora the point where this uh, labia minora joint is called clitoris the role of clitoris is similar as penis at the time of intercourse it become erect the vagina is has a covering of a membrane which is called hymen. So this hymen is uh, often break down during the first intercourse. However, uh, it can also be uh, it is also break down uh, after some sports activities like uh, horse riding and cycling. So the breaking of uh, hymen is not the actual indicator or the not uh, reliable indicator for the virginity of women because it can be uh, broken after certain sports activity or it also persists some time after the intercourse. So the presence and absence of hymen is not a reliable indicator of virginity in female. Okay. So now we are going to discuss ovary. Okay. So ovary are the uh, flattened ovoid body and which is about 2 to 4 cm in length connected to the pelvis wall and uterus by a ligament. So now I will explain this with a diagram. This is a uterus which open into cervix and which open into vagina and this is the fallopian tube. This is the fallopian tube and this is the ovary and uh, this ovary is connected to the pelvis wall and the uterus by a ligament so this is the ligament which supports the ovary okay now this ovary is covered with a thin epithelium 
which is called the germinal epithelium. Beneath the germinal epithelium present a tunica albuginea and beneath the tunica albuginea present a stroma. So this whole part is called stroma. Okay. So we can divide ovary into two parts. The cortex which is, which is the outer part having a layer of tissues and the innermost part which is medulla. So medulla or also called zona vasculosa. It is the central deeper portion of the ovary and which is connected this is the central deeper portion of ovary connected to the uh, blood vessels lymphatic vessels and nerve fiber and uh, it continue to the mesovarium and the next one is the cortex which is the outer part and it is a compact cellular it, uh, it has a compact cellular layer and the cortex has the outer lining which is called germinal epithelium and the inner one is tunica albuginea so this germinal epithelium gave rise to the number of primordial ova so the cells present in the germinal epithelium produces the primordial ova uh, the primordial ova moves towards the cortex as you can see in this diagram uh, further the development of this primordial ova take place it is transferred into the it is converted into primary follicle after which it is converted into the secondary follicle as you can see in this diagram so this outer layer you can see covering the oocyte is called granulosa cells these cells are uh, present because of the cells present in the cortex so these are the cells uh, forming a layer around the oocytes from the cortex okay so further the secondary follicle uh, it develops into the secondary follicle and uh, further it mature and after when the oocytes get mature it releases the ovary and it releases from the ovary and uh, enter into the fallopian tube and this process is called ovulation so ovulation is a process in which the mature ovum releases from the ovary and enter the fallopian tube and is ready to fertilize now and after that this uh, developing corpus luteum will degenerate and after which this cycle will again continue so uh, this cycle take place in each in every uh, 28 days in the female ovary in the either of the ovary either it's left or right but not uh, in both at the same time okay so uh, if uh, there is no fertilization take place then the menstrual cycle continues and if the fertilization take place then the menstrual cycle stops and then no ovulation will occur okay so at 7th and 8th month of interuterine life about 6 million of primordial follicles are found in the ovary so inside the womb of a mother the female child bears 6 million primordial follicle at its 7th and 8th month so this primordial follicles were 6 million and after the birth it is uh, it remains 1 million and uh, rest is degenerated and at the time of puberty when the female become mature uh, and is ready to be a baby the number reduced to 3 lakh to 4 lakh after menarche, menarche is a uh, stage when a female can bear a baby and uh, after menarche, during every menstrual cycle one of the follicle mature and releases in uh, its ovum and this will continue till the menopause menopause is the stage in which the menstrual cycle ends and the female is no more able to bear a child and hence other follicles degenerated all after menopause okay 
Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe exam hai on YouTube. Like our videos and please comment.